So, Valiant Comics and Sony looks like they're jumping into the shared universe game. Now, we saw this kind of with Sony already when they tried to make Spider-Man into their its own shared universe, and that failed miserably. But now they're kind of going at it with a new twist. And they've teamed up with Valiant Comics, which a lot of people don't know about. It's a smaller comic uh, group, but they have a few things that we'll mention a little bit later that you'll be like, oh, okay, I know that property. Uh, and so these two are teaming up to create a shared universe. And right now they released a slate of films. They haven't titled all of them, but they're letting us know that they will have five films in their phase one of their thing. And I do believe they use the term phase one. So Interesting. copying off of Marvel a little bit. Yes. Is that a bad thing? We'll, we'll talk about that. Well, I, I think too uh, that uh, from what I saw that those, if those five films are the ones I'm thinking of, Valiant was already planning to make, five films um for what they wanted yeah. to start so yeah. but, I, but let's, I guess let's just, not let's just... not jump ahead of ourselves here brendan because i have a read that i'm doing and when you start saying the read while i'm about to read it it, it makes it because because the first three movies that have been confirmed are number one we're going to get a movie called harbinger then number two we're going to get a movie called bloodshot then number five so who knows what three and four are going to be but five is called harbinger wars harbinger yeah harbinger wars so and you were like crossover one, right? No. Our, the... Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all pretty much building into ones, kind of what you were talking about. And the ones that they're talking about, really the big comics it looks like they're going to be focusing on here are going to be Harbinger and Bloodshot. Everything's going to kind of come together for number five, kind of like Avengers brought all of those characters together, kind of what Brendan was alluding to just a second ago. Um you know, bringing everything. So let's explain a little bit about the two main groups that we're going to be seeing in this. And then the first one is going to be Harbinger. Now, this is about a guy who I don't remember how old he is, to be honest with you. I learned about most of this yesterday, so forgive me if I'm inaccurate in anything. But it's a guy who developed, who discovers he has telekinesis powers and he can do a lot of cool things. And he's not the only one in the world. Anybody who can do this is called a Harbinger. So they, some of them are good, some of them are bad. Uh, sound familiar to like mutants? Uh, yeah, just a little bit. Um, but still, interesting idea. And then number two we have is Bloodshot. Now, Bloodshot is about a guy who was a former soldier who was almost killed and then brought back to life by this miracle nanotechnology. And this nanotechnology has given him, imbued him with special powers, and he then becomes a Harbinger hunter. He goes around hunting down all these people. And so who can guess what number five is going to be about? Probably about them clashing, I would imagine. Even though maybe not. Maybe one of those other movies brings those two together. Is it Harbinger or Harbinger? Harbinger. Harbinger. I, I have Harbinger. It's one of the two. I think it's Harbinger. I'm looking at it. It's Harbinger. It's like Harbinger. Well, you could have just said that. It, fun fact, it, it's like a band that you you specifically may know and probably no one else does. Okay, what's that band? It, it was your father's band, but all right. What, he was the what, Harbingers. No, they were the Harbingers. Cause it was, Harbingers. No, nah, they, they're, they're named after the same thing anyway. Okay, well, but so we're seeing a couple interesting things. So uh, looking at the format with what they are doing with, especially what Valiant and Sony are doing, is they're kind of copying the Marvel template. And when you look at it, it's probably not the worst thing because that is one of the most successful movie franchises ever created. And that's just the Marvel brands. And they've done it so well. I mean, I want to say at least three or four of those movies have broken box office records for the biggest weekends in their time. I, one of them, the Avengers, the first one is right up there with Avatar and Titanic for the most money grossed with a movie. So, And it was also an excellent movie, just saying. So it seems like this is actually a good thing that they're taking some, some cues from the Marvel guys and saying, okay, well... You know, Sony, you can make movies. We have the IP, the intellectual properties, as in the comics, and we want to bring them together. And so I, I'm thinking this is not a bad way to go about things. Um, and, and the storyline actually does sound pretty cool, even though it sounds a little bit too much like Jumper, if you ask me. If you haven't seen that movie, it was a movie with Christian Haydenson or whoever played wasn't Anakin a... Skywalker. Yeah. It wasn't good, though. I, I, I wouldn't it say it was horrible, a bad yes. movie, though. But it wasn't good. Yeah, it I wouldn't was say it was enjoyable. good either. It was a good concept. It, had it, it was a cool concept. 
Yeah, and that that's kind of what this concept is. It seems like there's people with special powers, and then there's a group that hunts them down. So we don't know which side of the fence. And again, which, which I don't really seen, know much more about that. Which, as you said, we we've seen in other <laughs> mediums as well, or just mm-hmm. other um, stories as well. That you know, group with special powers, people are afraid of group with special powers, so they hunt them. Whatever. Yeah. It's, well, I mean, that's mutants. That's everything. Pretty. Much. It's a good setup. Um, it, 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 works. Of it works because that is human nature. I mean, it's it's never bad to, to say, hey, this is what humans do anyway, so we're going to put it to an extreme. And that's not a bad thing. I, I actually like those stories. So the last bit I wanted to really mention about this story, because I do think it's a cool idea to bring out another universe, shared universe. I mean, we're getting, we're getting a little overcrowded with them between MCU, DCEU, uh, the monster, the universal monster universe, and now this one. But there is one character out there that intrigued me. I don't know how he'd fit into this universe, but he is a valiant comic character. And it there is very, very much so intrigued me, and that is Turok, the Dinosaur Hunter. Everybody knows the Nintendo 64 game, but most people don't realize that it was a comic <laughs> before then, and that is where they grabbed it from. So I don't know how you'd fit him in there, because I don't think he really does fit in any of that because he's a dinosaur hunter, so you'd have to kind of mix some weird things in there to get it in there, but... First, he hunts dinosaurs. Then he hunts harbingers. You never you never know. Maybe he's yeah, maybe he's one of the best hunters, so who knows? But but that is, is pretty cool, and I am looking forward to see another superhero universe start up. Yes, I'm getting burnout on superheroes, but this one seems like more of a unique way of doing things, and it's also... Actually, I say unique, but they're copying the same formula. The stories seem a little more unique than the the standard superhero stories. Uh, they, there's seems to be a little more gray areas in these stories than there is in the the regular Marvel and DC. Now, granted, there are plenty of themes in Marvel, especially with the mutants and you know equality and stuff that gets a little bit different. But it's pretty much, you know, these are the good guys and these are the bad guys, and here you go. And this, the first two movies are going to present, obviously, two different sides of this conflict as protagonists. And so that does make things interesting to me. And if they could somehow work Turok in there with his, like, exploding bow and arrows, like, that'd be cool. Yeah, and uh, from what I understand, uh, Valiant started in the 80s by former uh people from marvel and i thought during the 80s was when they were uh kind of getting edgier so i don't know if they were leaving because of the edginess or if they left and were part of the edginess whatever so i'm guessing the a lot of their i'm guessing it's the latter and that a lot of these stories Mm -hmm. come out of that period Uh, at least they originate from that period which can be um pretty interesting because i think that's really what people want to see more is stuff mm-hmm. that's a little bit i'm not gonna say well, they're not targeting it at kids anymore they're targeting it at adults yeah yeah but also just more intricate and willing to yeah. to uh, depth. make characters that are more nuanced you mm-hmm. know not not complete like you were saying kind of more gray area characters and situations so so I'm looking forward to see it, but hit us up. Let us know. Is there anybody you're really looking in particular forward to seeing in this universe? If you are more of a Valiant comic fan, Um, hit us up. Let us know. Who do you think? What do you think movies three and four will really be centered around? Uh, Comments down below, of course, at What's My Face on Twitter, Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. 